Welcome to chapter C4 of the textbook on sustainability management. This chapter is about sustainable production and logistics. So let's have a look. After this, or after reading this chapter, you'll be able to do a couple of things. You'll first be able to explain the so-called waste hierarchy of reduce, reuse, and recycle. And uh, yeah, we will actually learn that this hierarchy uh, composed of these uh, components as well as potential disposal. It's called a hierarchy because reducing is usually preferred over reusing, over recycling, and then over finally um, disposal and disposing. You'll be able to discuss the relevance of uh, product development for a sustainable product use. And in that regard, you will learn that product designers and engineers can improve the sustainability performance of a product by applying various elements from eco-efficiency, eco-effectiveness and sufficiency that especially have an influence on the use phase. And these three elements of eco-efficiency, eco-effectiveness and sufficiency you already know from chapter A4. You'll then be able to illustrate uh, several examples of eco-design and you'll learn that eco-design aims at improving sustainability of a product across the entire life cycle of a product from production over use to disposal and so on. And then you'll be able to distinguish four so-called reduction oriented product use concepts. Um, four, uh, exactly. The first one is uh, the option of extending the potential useful product life. The second one is the extension of the effective product use. The third one is an intensified product utilization over the product's lifetime. And the fourth and final one is an intensified product utilization during its use time. And you will learn the differences and how they manifest in reality. Furthermore, you'll be able to apply the so-called 4R framework at the end of a product life cycle. The 4Rs, um, uh, that is um, reduce and recycling in the first specification. And 4Rs basically covers reuse, repair, remanufacture and recycle. So these are the 4Rs and repair also comes sometimes with so-called refurbishing and remanufacture also comes with the concept of repurposing and we will have a look what that means in detail. You'll also be able to explain options of so-called material oriented approaches at the end again of a product life cycle. So once the product is not longer useful and you'll learn that material oriented approaches not only include uh, using, for example, non-recycle materials, um, or actually not using non-recycle materials, of course, or harmful substances, um, but it also covers uh, dismantling manuals, recycling products, anything that makes it easier to deal with the product at the end of the of the product's useful life. And finally, you'll be able to illustrate options for reducing the environmental impact of logistics. Ah, that's the logistics part of this chapter here by referring to the strategies again of eco-efficiency, eco-effectiveness and sufficiency. You'll learn that sufficiency measures reduce the overall volume of transport. Eco-effectiveness is rather difficult to pursue for a general linear activity such as transporting something from point A to point B, which is a linear thing. And then we'll have a look at eco-efficiency and you'll learn that uh, this uh, strategy um, uh, cover strategic and also operational measures to reduce the average transport distance, improve the uh, capacity utilization of transport, or also introduce more environmentally friendly means of transportation, um, relatively speaking. As always, the chapter comes with a couple of features. The first one is about um, electronic waste in the global thaws and the problems that are connected to e-waste, so-called e-waste. That's our feature of, uh, on sustainability in society. Then we'll have a look at sustainability in research by discussing the article by Kleindorfer, Singel and uh, von Wassenhofer from 2005 on sustainable operations management. In the feature on sustainability in business, we'll have a look at Fairphone, a modular smartphone design, a very interesting aspect. Then another feature on sustainability in society about e-commerce. Is e-commerce actually a boon or bane for sustainability? Is it good or is it bad? And in which cases? 
And then we have a final look in this chapter here at sustainability in business. Uh, that's the case from Nigeria, We Cyclers, an interesting case about reverse logistics services. With that, have fun with this chapter again.